This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from the Creative Dojo Hope you're all doing well out there. Today's After Effects quick tip, we're actually answering a question from the community member and they basically asked how to actually create reactive dynamic animations and trigger animations using markers within After Effects. Now, shameless plug, this is actually similar to how my type flow preset works for After Effects. Basically, it's a preset that allows you to create really nice easing, overshoot, bouncing text animations easily. It's name your own price, link down below, check it out. But basically in that tool, you have the option to actually enable markers and use markers to actually trigger the actual animation itself. And so this is what we're gonna be talking about today in this quick tip. So traditionally, if you wanted to create an opacity fade in, fade out, for example, you need to go to the opacity, set a keyframe for zero, move forward, set a keyframe for 100, move forward, set another keyframe, and then move forward again, and then set it back to zero. And so effectively, you've done four separate steps, you've created four separate keyframes, and if you wanted to change the timing, you need to go ahead and move it backwards and forwards. If you wanna change the individual keyframe timings, you need to push this back and move this forward, kind of keep it in sync. And if you have multiple keyframes, it's kind of confusing. So this is actually kind of visually messy and it's kind of a little bit too messy for something so simple like an opacity fade in, right? So this is where triggering stuff with markers might actually come in handy. And so let's go ahead and take a look at how we do that really quickly using expressions. So I'm gonna delete this set it back to 100. Let's go ahead and add a few markers here. So I've recently built a TKL keyboard, so I don't actually have a numpad anymore. So if you don't have a numpad, you can go to layer, go to marker, and go ahead and hit add marker. Or if you have a numpad, you can go ahead and hit the asterisk key. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and add another marker just for demonstration purposes. And I'm gonna go ahead and double click on them and just add a comment right here. I'm gonna call this one in. I'm gonna call this one out. And this is so that we can just reference the right keyframes um, for this uh, tutorial right here. And so we have two markers. Let's go ahead and try to do a quick little fade in using these markers. So I want, you know, maybe half a second before this marker right here to begin the fade in so that when I get to this marker, I'll be completely faded in. And then once I hit this point in time, again, I want to start the transition here and fade out in 0.5 seconds. So that's my goal. So let's go ahead and go to the opacity property here. Hit T on the keyboard to reveal the opacity and go ahead and hit alter option on the keyboard and go ahead and click the stopwatch to enable expressions. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and access the timing of these markers, right? I need the timing of these markers so I can kind of time things up with math. And so how do we access this? I'm gonna create a new variable called var marker in and so what is marker in gonna equal? It's going to equal this layer, marker, key, one, and type in time. And so I've recently switched to linear switches from tactile switches. And so if you haven't tried linears yet and you're sleeping on it, try it. I love it, it's pretty cool. It feels buttery smooth. Um, and so basically what this is saying is, hey, look at this layer. Look at all the markers. So now we're dealing with markers now. Now look at key number one. And so this is hard coded. Now I'll show you guys another way to do this in another tutorial to be a little bit more dynamic. Um, but in this particular case, we're saying, hey, go to this layer, look at the markers and look at the first marker, key one. This is this one right here. If you wanted to access the second marker, this one right here, you would just send this to number two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. And we don't want just the marker, we want the time of the marker. So in this particular case, this marker occurs somewhere around two seconds. So cool, marker in equals roughly two seconds because this is where this marker is. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for marker out. This layer, marker dot key two dot time, semicolon. And we'll create one last variable, var dir equals 0 0.5. And so this is gonna be the duration. And usually when we're talking about time, it's usually in seconds. And so our duration is gonna be 0.5 of a second. Cool. So now that we have our variables, let's go ahead and make this work. And we're gonna be using my favorite, very powerful expression, the linear expression. So you can go to the play button right here, go to interpolation and go to linear, this one right here. Or you can just manually type it, hit a semicolon, and so this is just gonna show you kind of the, the pre-filled parameters that it wants. So 
The first parameter right here, T, is basically the iterator. This is something that usually changes. It's either the index or time. Typically we use time because it's always changing, um, but typically this first property always changes in some sort of way. Um, and when it changes from T min to T max, it's going to remap and actually dry value one to value two. Now I know that sounds very, very confusing. So basically T is always changing. And when T is between T min to T max, our value one is going to linearly change to value two. So T is gonna be the driving machine. And when T is in between T min and T max, then that means it's going to, this expression is going to linearly, you know, change value one and pretty much automate it and transition it to value two by itself. So you don't have to keyframe it basically. So cool. So this is typically time. So we're gonna type in time. Now T min, I'm gonna type in marker in minus duration. Okay, T max is going to be our actual marker in. And our value is going to be from zero to 100. And so this is this basically just takes care of the first fade in part. Um, and so you might need to pause the video and kind of think about what I just typed in here. So we're saying the time. So time is always increasing, right? Typically, whenever we play something, time is increasing. So when the time is between the marker, the first marker minus 0.5, so somewhere right here, when it's between here and the marker in time, which is right here, then it's going to increase the opacity from zero to 100. So when you're at marker in minus 0.5 or beyond, you're at zero. And then once you, you know, transition to the marker in time, which is right here, it'll fade the opacity to 100. So it's gonna animate from zero to 100 based on the marker in minus 0.5 seconds to marker in. Now, you know, you can always change this duration to whatever you want, one second, two seconds, three seconds, whatever it is. Um, but if I go ahead and hit okay, you're gonna see that, you know, our text is zero. And then once you're 0.5 seconds away from the marker, then it transitions to zero to 100 until you get to the marker and that's it. And so cool, this is the fade in part. Um, now, how do I do the fade out part? Um, it would be very, very similar, right? So, you know, ignore this time. And instead we'll do marker end to marker n plus duration 100 to zero. So basically it's saying whenever you're at the marker and then whenever you're transitioning to marker plus the 0.5 seconds out here, it's going to transition from 100 opacity to zero. And this would pretty much work to fade out. But somehow we have to combine the two, right? Because we want both. We don't just want fade in and we don't want just fade out. We want both fade in and fade out. And so a little trick is to either do, you know, the first minus the second, or you can do something called math min and it's gonna take the min, the minimum of these two values right here. So I'm gonna copy this, comma, and it, notice how I just deleted one of my uh, parentheses. We need to add that back in. So the math min looks like this. And basically you wanna type in the first linear expression and then add a comma between the two and then paste a second linear expression in there. And so it should look something like this. Be careful because After Effects deletes parentheses sometimes because it tries to autocorrect and auto assumes. And I got an error, it's actually not marker end, it's marker out here. Go ahead, okay. And perfect, so basically it's going to take the minimum of the two linears. And so if it can fade out, it will fade out basically. And so here, as you can see, we have zero and then half a second in, it fades in and it'll stay in. And then once it hits this point, 0.5 seconds out, it'll fade out. Now there are actually other properties you can actually access with this. This is just kind of a base tutorial. Um, but for example, I have this em empty text layer right here. I'm gonna use the source text to kind of show you what you can access and read. 
um, in with expression. So if I go ahead and pick whip to our layer right here, which we, which has the markers, we can actually go into here and type in marker to access all the markers. Go to key one, which is again our in marker right here, and you can actually go ahead and read the comment. And so by doing this, you can actually see that we actually have access, and you know we can read in the actual comment. So here it says in right here, um, and so if we change it to two. It'll read the second marker and it'll say out. And so basically you can actually read this information in and you can do an if else statement and check to see, you know, what the marker says and do something based on what the marker says. Another thing you can do is so you can actually read the total number of keys, right? So if you type in marker and type in num keys, it should return two right here because we have two total markers right here. And with this, you can actually loop through all the markers and you know filter through all of them and see, you know, what the comment says or, you know, do whatever you want. But basically, this is just some ways to kind of manipulate around and go ahead and kind of read all the marker data and do something with it, which is very, very cool. So one last example here, I have another composition. I have a square shape layer and I have these two null points right here. And so what if I wanted to do the same exact thing, but I want to animate not opacity, but position, right? And so this is basically the same idea. We can go into the position property, hit P on the keyboard, go ahead and hit alter option and go ahead and type in var marker in. It's going to equal this layer marker key one dot time. And then same thing with var marker out. This layer marker key two time. All right, cool. So we have our markers. And so what it can do again is you can go to the linear parameter, type in time. And whenever we're at the marker in through marker out. So whenever the time is between marker in and marker out, we're going to animate the position from, you know, we can enter in any hard coded value right here, um, like 0, 0, 0, 2, 5, 5, 5 or whatever. But I have these nulls right here. So I'm going to hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position. And we can actually link it up. So we can start from the start null, hit a comma, and go ahead and link to the end null right here. And so what this says is, you know, here we have the time, and whenever time is between marker in and marker out, whenever it's in between those times, we're going to animate the position from the start null position to the end null position. And so what we have now is at our square is auto animating from one null to the other null based on the timing of our markers. And so we can change this all up and things will still dynamically animate and we can shift the markers in time and things will animate dynamically based on the markers. Before I go, I wanna give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is a low moment platform to create an amazing website whether it's for your store, online business or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 25 hour support. And best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. And again, this is just a very, very basic tutorial on how to get started using markers to kind of animate animations. You can actually do more complex things like drive different animation cycles and drive different animation pre-coms and do more complex animations based on what the comment says and all sorts of things with keyframes and markers. It's really crazy what you can do by reading the kind of marker data in and kind of driving it using markers and you know cycle through complex cycles and different pre-made animations using markers. Um, you can also reference the endpoint of your layers and trigger things by the endpoint and markers. And there's a lot of things you can do. And I'll post more information down below about markers and how to use them in expressions. Links down below in the video description. If you guys found this video helpful, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this. And please, please, please leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Career Dojo. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.